Good morning. In today's video, I want to take you through what it's like living in a passive house when um, you have a heat wave. We're in Perth. Um, our home is uh, built to passive house standards and we're experiencing a really hot stretch at the moment, about four or five days of uh, temperatures over 40 degrees. And the temperature's kind of only dropping around, you know, to 25, 26 degrees at night. And so this is an opportunity for me to explain how um, a passive house manages with a heat wave, but also how we operate the house to get the most out of it, to keep it comfortable. So Perth has a fairly hot Mediterranean climate. We do experience some runs of hot weather during the summer months. And most days we tend to get a really cooling sea breeze, which is really helpful in lowering the temperature. But when you get the really, really hot weather, the sea breeze just never seems to arrive. So you don't get any relief. And so it's really important that you have like a, an energy efficient building envelope that's highly insulated, that doesn't let the heat in. And then you can let the air conditioning do its best to keep the house cool without, you know, costing a lot of money and electricity. The main benefit of the passive house concept being airtight and having heat recovery ventilation is was well sort of put on display this morning when I woke up and left the house and there was a really, really thick smell of bushfire in the air because there's been a big fire um, out near the airport today that's about you know 20 30 kilometers away but the smell of the bushfire smoke was really strong as soon as you left the house but when um, we were asleep last night and when i woke up this morning there's no sort of bushfire smell in the house whatsoever it seems like most of that's now disappeared but when i went to the gym at like 6 a.m this morning the sky was like completely thick with smog um, so, you know, the HRV does an amazing job of getting rid of that sort of smoke smell um, throughout the house. In terms of the house design, the most important thing is that um, windows are really well shaded from the summer heat. So here we've got our south facing windows and as you can see they've got a really deep overhang and the sun actually rises kind of southeast in the morning and sets in the southwest but these overhangs do a really great job of stopping any sort of sun hitting these windows and i'll take you around the side of the house and i'll show you what we do on the east and west facing windows so the sun's in full force this morning and that easterly sun is hitting the side of the house so we've got these roller shutters they shut down in the morning just to prevent any heat gain coming through the glass some of you may make a comment about the fact that we've got dark cladding but, and that does obviously gonna heat up more than a light colored cladding. That was like an aesthetic preference. We looked into it and decided that there wasn't any real strong scientific data about a light colored cladding versus dark colored cladding. In any case, this particular product does have reflective elements in the paint itself, but also we have a ventilated facade. So when the air behind the cladding heats up, it has a way of escaping. So it's got a direct sort of chimney effect of cool air coming in from the bottom of the cladding and exhausting at the top and that helps keep heat away from the structure. So coming around to the north side of the house you can see we also have these really deep overhangs and they're perfectly designed to completely exclude summer sun and you see there's no actual sun hitting the glass at all and there's barely any sun hitting the alfresco area either. So we've designed the overhangs on this house to exclude the sun all the way up to the end of April. Um, the house doesn't actually need much sun to keep it warm in winter, so we wanted to provide as much um, shading as possible. Moving inside, we've got a single bulkhead split system air conditioning unit, and you can see the vents here above the kitchen bench. So that's the only outlet for AC in the whole house. And that's managing to keep the house at a comfortable 25 degrees. 25 is actually the number we've set for the air conditioning. And so in this uh, sort of run of heat wave, we've shut down the house, all the doors and windows, all the shades are down. And this single air conditioner is keeping um, the living room to be a very, very comfortable 25 degrees. And when we move to rooms that don't have air conditioning, we find that there might be upwards of one to two degrees variation from what we have in the living room. But generally, I find that it's not really necessary to have a second air conditioner. The one air conditioner does a good job. And part of the reason for that is the heat recovery ventilation system over time does spread the coolness around the house. 
but we also have one other feature that we installed after construction to help things along a bit. So after we moved into the house, we found that um, we have an activity room where we watch TV and we found that that does tend to get a bit hot. It's on the north western side of the house, so it's exposed to external heat on two sides. And with lots of bodies in the room and if there's really no ventilation coming from the wind, it, the room does get a bit hot. So what we did is we installed a room to room ventilation fan. It's like an inline fan. It's got a very short run from the kitchen directly into the activity room next door. And that's moving about 300 liters of air a minute into that space. It's never gonna replace like a, a, an individual room air conditioner, but it certainly has made a really noticeable difference in how comfortable that room is um, in summer and generally day to day as well. So we actually leave that fan running basically 24 seven. It's super quiet and it just provides a real boost of fresh air that the HRV is not really designed to do. And so that was a really good investment. We've also added another inline room to room ventilation system to the self-contained apartment facing um, the street. That's a completely self-contained apartment and we were worried that our tenants might be getting a bit hot during summer. We hadn't had any actual complaints, but I wanted to be a little bit extra cautious, but I didn't want to go the whole way and install an air conditioner and have that kind of like you know, abuse in terms of how often the tenants use it. So I installed this room to room ventilation system and that seems to have done the trick. So moving outside, I wanted to show you just how small the air conditioner is that's powering this whole house. It's a six kilowatt system and the whole house is about 220 square meters internally. And as you can see, it's not a very big system at all. And it's hardly running, like it's barely ticking over. And geez, if I had to say in terms of fan speed, I'd have to say that fan is barely operating at 20% at the moment. And that's really easily keeping the house at a constant 25 degrees. And it's getting up around 35 degrees outside right now. So that's pretty impressive. Um, that means it's using barely as much electricity as the hot water heater behind me. Pretty impressive. So that's a demonstration of how we keep cool in our passive house. This is you know, pretty extreme conditions at the moment. We really try hard to keep everything locked up tight to keep the cool area and the, and the hot, air, hot air out. But generally during summer conditions, we don't need to run the air conditioning that much. We utilize the passive ventilation um, by opening winter windows and we have ceiling fans like here and these um, are generally running to just help get a bit of air circulation. In any case, the air conditioning is powered by the solar panels and there's plenty of power available from the 10 kilowatt system we've got. It's powering the pull pump, the hot water system, the pull heater, the air conditioning, plus any incidental sort of electrical use around the house. So there's plenty of power available and it's only during the heat waves where we find the need to run the AC overnight because the outside temperature just isn't dropping um, you know, below the internal temperature. Yeah, let me know what you think. How are you coping with the hot weather at the moment? Um, would you benefit from this style of construction? Um, and do you have any questions or comments? Um, please like and subscribe and uh, look out for my next video. Thanks.